location, Militia, please? Will you help Bible education, sir? Thank you. Help Bible education. Have a heart, lady, please. It's a very worthy cause. There are a lot of worthy causes. But why should it be my luck to have one move next door? All right, I'm sorry. This militia. It's located next door, you know. Must have about a hundred girls come out every morning. And they all want to put the bite on me. Maybe you'll make it a hundred and one. I'll find out. All right. What size you wear, honey? Fourteen? No, twelve. Oh, no more twelves today. Saturday, you know, I get a big play on Saturdays. Listen, next time you come early, and I'll give you a twelve. Meanwhile, you wear a fourteen, all right? All right. Now, the deal is, you pay me three dollars a day to rent the uniform, plus half the money you collect. Uh-huh. Can I pay you the whole amount at the end of the day? Oh, no, honey, you'll have to pay me the three dollars now, and then later on we'll settle up the rest. And the leave your hat and coat as a deposit on my stuff. Oh, you can trust me, mister? I'm a police officer. Exactly what did you find this fellow doing? Will you speak up, please? I can't hear you. So who turned on the radio so loud? That's no radio. That's my wife. We grabbed this guy who was renting out the, the cams, the uniforms. But the only charity he was paying off to was himself. Now, how do you see that? Well, in principle, it's a, a felony, but in practice, we'll have, probably have to let it go as a misdemeanor. How about on a par with what my wife is doing to the neighbors? Dave. Dave, we've got squawks from legitimate charities who use uniform collectors. Now, you know these can-shaking phonies do a lot of harm to a lot of decent causes. Yeah, well, uh, Frank, I'd like nothing better than to nail this thief properly, but... Look, suppose I come down and see what I can do, huh? Well, for what uh, lucrative engagement are we rehearsing this time? Oh, Dave, don't be vulgar. This time it's for charity. Charity? I then handed him the three dollars. He then handed me the cape, the cap, and the coin box. I then made the arrest. Well, what do you got to say to that, uh, Mr. Rice? Well, I say my name is Fred Rice, and I live at 315 Grassmead Street. Are you familiar with the city law that requires a license for charitable solicitations? Do you have such a license? No. And you're breaking the law. Oh, no, not me. I'm exempt from the law. What do you mean, you're exempt? What makes you exempt? Well, the law says that religious organizations don't need a license. And you are familiar with the law. What uh, religion are you connected with, Mr. Rice? The uh, Bible education religion. Oh, what kind of religion is that? It's my religion. Do you have any ordained ministers? Yeah, one. Fred Rice. You ordained yourself? Oh, look, honey, this is the USA. And what are we trying to do, start another inquisition? Mr. 
Rice. Uh... To what religious purpose do you put the money you collect? The purpose is to buy Bibles for poor people. How many Bibles have you bought? So far? None. Oh, but, but I do intend to buy Bibles. Can you prove that? Oh, look, I, I've only been operating a few weeks. I mean, I had the expenses to meet first. I mean, can you prove that I don't intend to buy Bibles? Let's get all the answers. Somebody told him the great principle of the game. Any cheap thief who knows enough to paste a religious label on a can is practically immune. Cheap is right. Even his labels are too crummy to stick. Hey, Dave, look at this. I mean, this, this can comes from another charity. Triple H. One of the big ones. Mr. Rice, where'd you get this can? I bought them. From the Triple H? Why not? Since when is a big national charity in business to sell cans to you? Frank, I think we have enough to hold them on. What do you mean, hold me? What for? What's the charge? If you stole these cans, the charge is larceny. Yes, it should be 25 cans per box. 25. 50, 75, 100. 125. Yeah, let me give you a hand. Thank you. Let's see what the inventory says we should have on hand. Three gross. Uh-huh. In other words, you're shy of 300 can. Approximately the number we can trace to Fred Rice. Well, I must tell you that I'm very shocked. He worked for us for almost a year. I had to fire him a couple of weeks ago, but it was for general incompetence. I had no idea he was stealing from us. Did he have access to this plant? He was our office manager. Oh, really? Well, that's it. You sign a complaint as executive director of Triple H, and we got him. I meant to ask you before you, by any chance, related to Phyllis Costa, the violin. It's my wife. Really? Yeah. Well, she's a wonderful musician and a very gracious lady. I met her several times when she played benefits for Triple H. That's right. And by the way, if you see her again, she plays the viola, not the violin. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Don't be silly. Anybody who's decent enough to check their inventory for me on a Saturday morning is entitled to call my wife a violinist. <laughs> Once. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> like, I don't want to ruin the rest of your day, so... If you'll come down to my office Monday morning and sign the complaint, that'll be soon enough. Oh, Mr. Costner, I hate to think of sending that lad to prison for stealing some cans from us. Yeah, well, if that lad had uh, robbed the bank, we'd nail him soon enough. But a charity thief seems to get the benefit of every doubt. The feeling seems to be that uh, it doesn't matter what he stole, it's nobody's money. That isn't your feeling, I'm sure. I see your point. I'll be down first thing Monday morning. I told you, I didn't steal anything. I I'm a preacher. Would I steal? Mr. Coster doesn't like anybody to lie to him. He's got to think about it. Believe me, I work for him, I know. The man is like a machine. They feed in cases, outcome convictions. How can you lie to a machine? Would I lie? I'm a preacher. Look, your case is routine. Now, Mr. Coster likes to go bicycling with his wife on Saturdays. Tell him what he wants to know. You might as well. Mr. Vance is coming by Monday to sign the complaint anyway. He's going to sign a complaint against me? Well, that's a laugh. He's the biggest crook in town. What do you mean? He'll advance. Look, forget what I stole. I'll tell you what he stole. Stole. Stealing. <laughs> Yeah. 
I kind of shook you up a little, didn't I? Well, honey, my brake is good. No, that's all right. Well, how is Dad supposed to be stealing from the Triple H? Kickbacks. Hey, you see what I see? Hot dog. Sauerkraut or onion? Relish. Two with mustard. Hey, you believe that? What? About Hillary Van Seek and Oh, I don't know. Hey, put the works on mine. You know, honey, I've worked for Triple H. Yeah. It's a marvelous story. They have chapters all over the country. Yeah. Clinics for physical health. Selman houses for social health. Lots of people raising money for them. Great. Thanks. What other inside detailed information have you got for me, huh? Oh, come on, Dave. I'm sure it's an honest charity. But I don't see how anybody could be misusing any of its money. Why? Well, for one thing, do you think a man like Henry Newman would stand for any nonsense? Judge Newman? What's he got to do with it? He's the national president. Judge Newman? No kidding. I didn't know that. Well, that makes a difference. I thought it might. Now I can concentrate on some plain and fancy bike riding. <laughs> Uh, the Tip Malloy, he's been working on the case. I don't know you, Mr. Vance. I'm not sure that you'll want to shake hands with me when I tell you that I can't sign the complaint. Why? Oh, but you agreed to sign it on Saturday. Well, naturally, I had to check with my associates and our national president, Judge Henry Newman. Judge Newman told you not to sign? Mr. Coster, please try to understand. A, a charity is a very sensitive Planet. Lives or dies on its public image. And if Fred Rice is prosecuted, very naturally, there's going to be publicity. Well, I can assure you that any item we give out will uh, make it absolutely clear that Triple H has nothing to do with Fred Rice. Yes, and to any fair-minded person who troubles to read the entire article, that's fine. But unfortunately, there are many people who aren't fair-minded, who won't read the entire article. They'll stop with the words Triple H. And they'll tar us with the same brush as Fred Rice. And the next time our workers ring their doorbell, they won't get a penny. But I don't believe there are many people like that. Well, all it takes is for 5% of the people to be like that, and we could lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in contribution. Mr. Coster, I know that you can subpoena me and force me to testify, but I pray that you won't because it could mean adverse publicity for a very worthy charity. I can assure you that's not our intention at all. Well, I appreciate that. But I do feel it's a mistake to exaggerate the dangers of signing this complaint. We are oversensitive in the charity business, no doubt about it. But what can I do? You can get your national chairman on the phone, if you will. You want to talk to Judge Newman about this? He's the one I have to convince, isn't he? Mr. Costa, believe me, I don't think you want to trouble a man like the judge with something like this. But I understood you to say that you had checked with Judge Newman and he had told you not to sign. No, sir. No, no, no. What I said was I checked with my associates and we made the decision based on what we knew the judge would want us to do. Oh. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Vance, for coming by. Well, thank you, Mr. Costa. Mr. Malone. Thank you for your understanding. Goodbye, gentlemen. Uh, Claire, get me the State Department of Social Welfare, the uh, Charity Registration Bureau. I want to see their full file on the Triple H. I think I'm going to take a little trip to Albany.
kidding. As a matter of fact, it was quite interesting. You know the uh, Triple H, lots of income, lots of expenses. Yeah, well, let's hurry it up. Tony Salisi's been trying to call you all day. What's his problem? Well, I'm not sure, but I think it has something to do with it. You're leaving a couple of felony murders on your dad just to go chasing up to Albany. Yeah, well, I got something for him that's going to make his hair stand on end. <laughs> Why does it cost the Triple H 50 cents to raise a dollar? Yeah, but you know how much it costs a charity like the United Fund to raise a dollar? The UJA, the Protestant Welfare, the Catholic Charities? Between 6 and 15 cents. But look, the Triple H doesn't put the money in their own pockets like Fred Rice. I mean, they do operate clinics and settlement houses, don't they? Sure they do. What difference does it make what part of the contributor's dollar goes for expenses, as long as something goes to do some good? Martin, what would you do if he'll advance it to you? This is a worthy cause. Please give me a contribution of $10. What would you do? I'll probably give it to him. Right. Now, what if you said, make that two checks for $5 a piece, one for the worthy cause, one for me. What would you do then? Kick his tail right out of my office. Okay, don't tell me. Try telling Tony Salisi. Tony, this figure of 50% is only what Vance will admit to. Dave, do you realize that Triple H is like Mother's Day? That's the point. So what's this all about, anyway? All I do is ask a few questions. Well, you managed to step on the toes of a certain Judge Henry Newman. You got the chief on the phone at 8 o'clock this morning, and the chief passed the buck to me at 8.05. New York time. You know what time that was out here? Tony, uh, Judge Newman knows about this? Henry Newman would like to see you in his office. I would strongly advise you to go. <laughs> Don't worry. To me, Judge Newman's always been a, on a par with Brandeis, Holmes, and Learned Hand. Matter of fact, when I was in law school... So? I had his picture on my wall. Oh, Mr. Custer. Come on in. You know Mr. Vance? Custer? Well, sit down, sit down. I want to show you something. Tell me who this funny-looking kid reminds you of. Well. Well? What? This uh, funny-looking kid reminds me of you. Mm -hmm. As it could be me, but it isn't. It's my brother. A few months after that was taken, he was killed. He fell off a freight car in the railroad yards. We were two skinny, undernourished kids with no place to go for recreation but the freight yards. We were climbing up a boxcar when it started to move. My kid brother didn't have the strength to hang on. You know the old joke, is it better to be rich and healthy or poor and sick? Well, don't laugh. It isn't funny to me. You know, some men feel strongly about cancer, heart disease, epilepsy. But with me, it's poverty and neglected health. That's why I'm for the Triple H. Now, why the devil are you against us? Excuse me, Judge Newman, but... Mr. Coster might feel freer to speak his mind if I left the room. Hillard, you stay right where you are. This meeting was your idea. Well, Mr. Coster... Judge, uh, I don't think a charity should spend 50 cents to raise one dollar. You don't. Fine. What else don't you think? Well, I don't, I don't think you can be aware of it, Judge. The Triple H uses substandard methods. What substandard methods? They send out unordered merchandise. Dress stickers, shiny pennies, neckties. Ballpoint pens. By whose standard are they substandard? The National Information Board, the Advertising Council. The idea is that the prospective contributor is too ashamed to send the merchandise back, and he's too honest to, to keep it without paying for it. So he sends in a few dollars. When you're raising money for a good cause, what difference does it make how you raise it? Well, if you mean that, Judge, come down to my office. I'll lend you a gun. I mean short of that. Now, what's the matter with you? Do we use guns? We use blackjacks. Here's one. A ballpoint pen that the uh, Triple H sends out with the prospective contributor's name already printed on it. In the trade, that's called a blackjack. Mr. Custer, in, in your trade, be quiet. Now, look, I don't know what that is. Why you be quiet for a minute, too? Now, Mr. Custer. It's been a long time since I've uh, practiced law. Let's see if I can still argue a case. The prosecution rests. 
Oh, you say that the charity shouldn't have to spend 50 cents to raise a dollar. But do you understand this? Every charity has a certain circle of friends, people who contribute every year. It's easy to raise money from them. But suppose you need more money. Well, you have to widen the circle. Send out more letters. Bigger pamphlets at higher expense. Now, the minute we set our sights on twice as many clinics and settlement houses, our fundraising costs go up four times. That brings it to 30%. Now, where do you draw the line? When are we doing enough good? Never. Now, can you argue with that? Hardly. Now, you seem to have some objection to Hillard Vance. But do you know what he's done for this charity? On the Triple H Board of Directors, there are 23 other men like myself, all very busy men. Let's face it. Some of them can't do much more than lend their names to dress up the letterhead. Now, we were plodding along at $250,000, and I felt that we needed a full-time professional in the driver's seat. Vance built up our income to over $2 million. Nearly ten times what it was. That means we can operate ten times as many clinics and settlement houses. Now, can you quarrel with that? No. Yet, you say that his methods are substandard. Yes. But he didn't invent them. These methods are used by charities all over the country, and they produce results. And they're not illegal by any laws, statutes, or regulations that I ever heard of. Are they ethical? Are they proper? Ethics. Ethics, I'll argue with you all day or all night. I sat on the bench for 30 years without one blot against my name. Now, do you think that at my age I'm going to condone unethical practices? Judge Newman. Now, if you think so, say so. I think not. So much for ethics. As for propriety, I couldn't care less. What I care about are the long lines of sick people in front of our clinics. The long list of lonely, miserable, neglected kids waiting to get into our settlement houses. And no national council of this or that is going to tell me how to raise money for them. Now, I am going to give you the number to my private line. If ever you find one fragment of evidence that there's anything crooked about this charity, I want you to call me on it. Otherwise, Mr. Costa, if you go looking for trouble where there is no trouble, and the newspapers pick up the story, well, you do more serious harm to every national health and welfare organization in the country. Why? <laughs> because most people like nothing better than an excuse to stop giving. you a beautiful case, Judge. You can be my lawyer anytime. Uh, Dave, are you still so interested in that Triple H case? Frank, you want me to ask you frankly? Yeah. No. Well, you might have some second thoughts. If you want to take a ride down to the Triple H settlement house on 12th Street, we made a juvenile case over there. What happened? Some kid broke in last night. Wrecked the place. I did. Yeah. Breakfast table. Yeah. The chair. Smash the window. Yeah. Splash of paint all over the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Through the whole can, huh? What a mess. Sure is. Yeah. Why did you do it, Tom? Oh. You know. 
That's the way it goes. You ever do anything like this before? No. Why did you do it now? Well, they had it coming. Who's they? The people who run the settlement house? Why did they have it coming? Did you ever give them trouble before? Me? Trouble? Hey, I was the best one. I came here every night. You liked coming here, didn't you, Tom? No. Ah, uh, come on. Tell the truth. You liked it. All right, so? So why did you do all this damage? Because. Why did they do what they did? I mean, like, all of a sudden. Why did they have to close the joint? I'm very much interested in Triple H again. Why is it with contributions going up ten times what they were before? They have to close down services. You tell me. For the people, presented by NP27 to help stop athlete's foot discomfort. Jameson, Malloy, and myself. That's everybody who's been working on the uh, case, Tony, with the exception of the accountants. Okay, what do you got? I'll let Jameson tell you about it. Well, one of Vance's little stunts that we dug up is a, it's a real cutie, Tony. Over the years, the Triple H has compiled a mailing list of 50,000 names. Now, these are people who are always good for a contribution. This is what they call a hot list, and it's very valuable. Uh-huh, so? Last year... Hillard Vance sold this list to a private mailing company for a dollar a name. Now the Triple H has to rent the same list from the same company two or three times a year at 25 cents a name. Oh, brother, I never heard that one before. In other words, in a couple of years, the mailing service will have made more money running Triple H its own list than it spent to buy it. Right, not counting what they make by renting this list to other charities. Follow all that, Tony? Can we prove the mailing service is kicking back to Hillard Vance? No. Uh, basically, Tony, uh, Vance's racket is in the printing and other supplies he orders uh, for the charity. I'll let Joy Ella tell you about that. Well, um, say Vance wants a pamphlet printed up. And say the going price for such a pamphlet is 12 to $14 a thousand, right? Uh -huh. Now, Vance pays 16 a thousand consistently without taking competitive bids. You follow me, Tony? You mean you smell payola? It's got to be payola. Also, for example, with ballpoint pens, even blackjack with names on them, you can buy them for uh, $17 a gross. So Mr. Vance paid $19. Now, multiply that by a couple of hundred thousand pens, Tony. Comes to real money. Same goes for the other novelties he buys. Same for the mailing service he uses. When he makes recordings for radio and television. When he rents a ballroom for fundraising banquets. The price is always up there? Just a little. I'm impressed. By him or by us? I'll let you know after you tell me whether we can prove that these guys are kicking back the hill at Vance. Well, uh, the problem is that uh, Vance deals with a tight little group of suppliers, a half dozen firms, and most of their business come from him. So even if we get them immunity and put them under oath, they'll never admit they made payoffs to Vance? Well, meanwhile, where's our case? Well, the thing to do would be to trace these payoffs. Oh, they were probably made in cash and covered up with false entries. Well, if Vance is too smart a cookie to take something that could be traced. Well, you won't know that until we finish digging. In the meantime, like the man said, where's our case? Oh, well, we haven't got one yet, but I... Wait a minute. Don't use a long-distance phone call to argue among yourselves. Sorry, Tony. All I want to know is if there's any guarantee we'll ever get a case against Hill Vance. Now, suppose we tie up the whole investigative staff. Can we be sure we'll come up with a winner? No, there's no guarantee. Then I can't authorize any more manpower on this. Tony. I'm sorry, but that's it. Okay. I'll see you at the end of the week. Goodbye. Yeah, so long, so long Tony. Tony. The only thing we can do is...
lay it out before Judge Newman. Let him take care of it. Mr. Custer, how much of this can you actually prove? Judge, I've conceded that I don't have enough direct evidence to convict Mr. Vance. So I leave it to you to do the next best thing. Mr. Custer, I appreciate your interest and all your trouble. I'll be in touch with you. They claim here that the Triple H pays you $15,000 a year, plus all you can steal. They estimate that last year it came to not less than $110,000. Judge Newman, I trust that you're not going to credit these unjust and unsubstantiated charges. They say that you authorized the payment of $100,000 to the firm of Pyramid Associates. Now, what the devil's that? I don't recall the name. Pyramid Associates, Judge. They're an outside firm of fundraising consultants. Yes, I see that here. Along with the question. With so much expensive fundraising talent on the Triple H payroll, why do we have to spend so much money for outsiders? Can they prove that one cent of that money came to me? That is not an answer. The Triple H books show the purchase of airline tickets to distant places. The airline states these tickets were never used. They were cashed in. Can they prove that one cent of that money came to me? Hillard! That's not an answer. Now, I want you to sit down with me, go over every one of these statements, and show me where Costa is wrong. I wouldn't waste your valuable time doing such a thing. Particularly when you're bound to find out that everything in there is absolutely true. I talk about long lines of sick people, neglected kids, and all the while you're stealing from them. How soon can I expect your resignation? Oh, you're going to let me resign? If you're quick about it. Well, that would be the easiest way for you, wouldn't it? No fuss, no scandal. We regret that our executive director has to resign to accept another position? That will be satisfactory. Where can I possibly find another position that pays so well? well if you won't resign, you'll make it very clear what I should do. Well, it's clear to me what you should do. If you don't like my methods, you should resign. Do you really think you were going to be able to fire me? Says Newman. I think it's high time that you found out that Triple H is in hock up to its ears. To five companies, to be exact. Printer, merchandiser, public relations firm, and two real estate firms. It's in hock for about $600,000, John. Considerably more than you've gotten at Till. But understand one thing. As long as I'm executive director, everything will be fine. They'll play ball with me because they're my boys. But once I'm out, they're going to scream their heads off for their money, and Triple H will go bankrupt and leave such a stink that even your great-grandchildren will have to change their name. I didn't know what you were doing. Who's going to believe that, Ted? <laughs> you know, I... I wasn't just juggling the petty cash. I've been handling $2 million a year. And you didn't know how? <laughs> I find it hard to believe myself. Now, when you call Costa, here's what I want you to tell him. That you've discussed the entire matter with your fellow directors and that Hillard Vance has agreed to change his method under your rigid supervision and that none of the board feels it's necessary to provoke a scandal or bankruptcy at this time. And I'm sure that'll be the end of it.
those checks you get, that you never deposit, that you throw in the drawers, that you keep until the bookkeepers develop ulcers, where are they? Why? Because they wouldn't even fire Vance. He's captured the charity. Judge Newman and his fellow influencers on the board, they're just going to hold their noses and hope. Sweetheart, you did a, a benefit for Triple H about two months ago, and they sent you a check for expenses. Where is it? I can't find it. Well, what are, what are you looking here for? Do you remember who you dealt with? Was it, was, was it Hillard Vance? I, I didn't deal with anyone, really. Just some um, fellow who answered the phone and, and uh, told me to itemize my expenses. Was it? Freddie, his name was, I think. Freddie Rice? Well, I have no idea. Where is the check? Here it is. Issued by Pyramid Associates. And the signature is Hillard Vance. Well, honey, should I have cashed it? Are you out of your mind? This crook is so smart, I couldn't even get him fired. But you, my love, you're going to put him in jail. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Now, wait a minute. No deals with you. Now, you hear it? You hear it, you'll grab it. Stop worrying about yeah. it. Those kind of deals are stock and trade. If little fish like you didn't buy, we wouldn't get the big fish. Look, I got nothing to say. So, oh, shut up. Listen. Now, Freddie Rice, we know that you made uh, phone calls for Pyramid Associates. Yeah, well, uh, that whole business was a fraud, which makes you a party to a conspiracy to commit a fraud. It's no longer a misdemeanor. It's a felony. You could get five years. Hey, what do you mean? No, don't get excited. If you talk to the grand jury, I'll urge that immunity be conferred upon you. You know what that means? Immunity? Immunity. It means that for whatever you say in front of a grand jury, you can't be prosecuted. Oh? Well, so tell me, Mr. Costa, uh, what do you want to know? He will testify that Pyramid Associates is nothing more or less than Hillard Vance. It has no other employees. It's a paper organization performing no other substantial services whatsoever. In other words, when Vance paid Pyramid $100,000 of Triple H money, he was really putting it in his own pocket. Uh, absolutely right. Dave, hey, tell me one thing and I'm sold. Why did Vance pay your wife's expenses with Pyramid money instead of Triple H money? Because Pyramid contracted to put the bills for out-of-town benefits. Yeah. Uh, Pyramid Vance had to make it look good, so they spent a few bucks. And all Fred Rice had to do was answer the telephone for Vance. Pyramid doesn't even have an office of its own. Hey, that makes Rice a perfect witness. You know. Well, now, Joe, do we have a case or don't we? All our cases should be as clean as this one. We're nailing a specific bum for a specific fraud. We're not splashing mud all over an innocent board of directors. We're not implying that all charities are no good. Yes. Oh, really? Send him in. Gentlemen? Guess who's here? Present my operate. Excuse me, my executive secretary, Miss Leona Burns, and my director of operations, Mr. Meredith Fulmer. How do you do? How do you do? Please Hello. sit down. Thank you. I won't say pardon the intrusion because who'd be kidding whom? I know this uh, little huddle is all about me. Well, who told you? Fred Rice? Well, who told me is immaterial. <laughs> Understand this charge of fraud in connection with certain payments I made to Pyramid Associates? That's correct, Mr. Vance. Well, would it have been fraud if the board of directors of Triple H Charity authorized those payments, sir? Come on, Mr. Vance. Who's kidding now? Well, I have here the minutes of the meetings of the board of directors, and I'll turn first to the meeting of January 10th. And I'm going to ask Mr. Former. Yes, to read the pertinent part of the record, if you will, please, sir. Whereas the board of directors consists of 20 
persons who reside in various and distant parts of the country, making it difficult to convene board meetings. Now, skip the whereases. What's your point? The full board hereby authorize the appointment of a five-man executive committee. This committee consists of a president, a vice president, and three staff officers. In other words, the three of you. Motion seconded and passed unanimously. Would you read the rider, please, Mr. Coleman? Three out of five shall constitute a quorum. <laughs> well, Mr. Vance, that doesn't authorize you to hand yourself $100,000. Well, I also have here the minutes of the executive board meetings, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask Miss Burns to read from the meeting of November 1st, omitting the whereases. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Motion is made that the sum of $100,000 be allocated to engage the firm of Pyramid Associates. Motion was seconded and passed unanimously. Well, who was at this meeting? President Newman? Vice President Max Ingram? Just the three of us. Uh, three out of five constitutes a quorum. Well, when did you write these up? This morning? Where they were written up is immaterial. Where the meeting was held is immaterial. Could have been on a subway platform as long as the motion was made and passed and what I did was authorize it. There was no fraud. As long as you and your two associates will swear to it, is that it? Now look, nobody's kidding anybody. Believe me, gentlemen, we will so swear. Well, gentlemen, our time is still being paid for by the Triple H. I know you don't want to waste charity money. So I'll leave it to you to tell me when and if you'd like to take this case to the grand jury. Shall we? Gentlemen. Judge, I can't catch Hill advance. I've tried, but he's too far ahead of me at every turn. So I've heard. What are you going to do about it? There's nothing I can do. In that case, on Monday morning, I'm going to ask the state attorney general to bring a civil suit against you and every director of the Triple H. The suit will enjoin your charity from soliciting any more funds. You're ready to destroy everything we've done, everything we've built. I'm ready to do anything I can to protect the public against Vance. What about the people, the charities helping? Aren't they part of the public? You say that it's either them or Vance? Charity is big business. Ten billion dollars a year, that's the charity tab of the country. Do you want it managed by kind old ladies in lavender and lace? Society girls in Paris gowns? I don't want it stolen either. Charity is also a public trust. I'm going to ask the state attorney to compel you and the other directors to restore all the funds that Vance has siphoned off. Custer, you once indicated some measure of respect for me. I meant it. Then why are you trying to destroy me? You think I was Vance's accomplice? Isn't that what you were? Can you seriously believe that I knew what he was doing? You knew after I told you, what did you do then? It was too late by then. You mean it was too good? You didn't want to lose any of it? Not for me, for the charity. I took nothing for myself. You took credit. You took laurels for your name. Every advertisement, every fundraising benefit made a low bow in the general direction of national president Henry Newman. You fell so in love with the applause, you closed your eyes. 
President Newman sold Judge Newman the argument that this kind of fraud isn't really so bad. After all, it's nobody's money. Twenty-three men on the board of directors. All men with respected names. Now, why hurt them? They came into this charity only to help others. Politicians are in it to harvest votes. The comedians, the big-time performers, break in a million dollars worth of free publicity. The millionaires are angling for tax deductions. The professionals are in it for business contacts. Judge, judge, how many of your directors can swear that their motives are unselfish? You lent your respected names to a thief. Names the public trusted. Names that made kids bring dimes to schools. And pull wages out of pay envelopes. And you didn't take the time or the trouble to make sure the public got its money's worth? How is that so different from lending a thief a loaded gun? Judge, I still respect you. And that's why I'm here. To ask you once more to call your board of directors and fire Hill Advance. I tell you, Judge, if you don't do that right now, and to the full extent that the law allows, I will respectfully kick your teeth in. Advance. Yes, I know there'll be trouble. Nasty publicity, I know. But I tell you, we'll be getting off easy if we face up to it now. Because there won't be enough whitewash in town to cover us. Will you come along with me, Max? Good. I'll call you as soon as I can arrange a quorum. Put your picture back on my wall. Hi, Phil. Hi. How's it going? Awful. How about you? Good day. Well, any day that Hill Advance gets what's coming to him can't be all bad. Dave, you got him. I didn't. Judge Newman did, but I'll settle. So awful. Julius wants us to do a benefit, and we've got about two days to put a program together. A benefit? What for? Oh, some little charity. You know, one of those quick buck outfits. What? It's for the Red Cross. Oh. And don't sit on the piano. It's bad for your gallbladder. Really, what David, gallbladder? you have to take better care of I yourself. don't have a gallbladder. You have a very delicate But if I had one, the one who would give it to me in a line to see you. 